Hello guys, my name is Faizan Agi and I have been dealing with Microsoft Word for a very very long time. Um, it's probably around 20 years we've been using Microsoft Word and I'm pretty sure that most of you are using it for formatting your documents or even writing documents. Um, however, um, do you think you know more than about Microsoft Word compared to other people? You know, there are a lot of lesser known uh, features that you should know about if you really want to be an effective and efficient researcher or writer. So in this video, I'll be showing you 20 tricks and tips to improve your working with Microsoft Word. So stay tuned. The video is coming up right now. Okay guys, so um, when we talk about Microsoft Word, we all know that um, this is the interface where we have a document and we can type anywhere we want. Uh, most of the people use mouse and keyboard to work with Microsoft Word. Now, in order to be efficient and effective, remember that today's video, we are focusing on 20 tips and tricks that are going to make you work faster with Microsoft Word, things that not many people know. Some people know, some people do not know. So uh, bear with me, maybe some of you might know some of these tricks that I'm going to tell you about, but please bear with me. Um, and again, remember that all these tips and tricks are going to focus on how you can work efficiently and effectively with Microsoft Word. So um, the first thing that I am going to tell you is uh, pinning the document. So most of the times we work with different documents, we close them, and then when we open the document again, we have to take some time to find it, where did we save it, or stuff like this. So one easy way to deal with that is pinning your documents. How do we do that? Uh, if you go to File menu, and you see here Open, uh, these are different documents that I have worked with uh, during the last week or even in the past, um, stuff like this. And if you look, any document that is here can be pinned. How can you do that? If you see all the way here towards the right hand, you see a pin. So let's say uh, I want to work with the smart travel apps. I, these days I want to pin it. I click on the pin and then I see it here right in the pin document. So very simple, I'm gonna close my Microsoft Word without saving anything. I'm going to open Microsoft Word again. Um, and all the way here I see pinned, I click on pinned and here I see, so click on it, um, the pin document is going to open it instead of, of me going and trying to find out. So this is one way how you can save your time by just pinning the document. You can not only pin the documents, but you can also pin different folders. So let's say these are the folders that I worked with. Um, you can just pin any folder that you want and it would work the same way. Next time you open your do Word document, you can just go to open folder, open tab here, and you can see the pinned folders or documents. So that's tip number one. Uh, moving on to tip number two. Uh, tip number two is um, saving your time by working with templates. So templates are things that are predefined in terms of formatting and stuff. Uh, since most of the audience for my channel are researchers, I'm going to show you something. Most of these publishers have templates for the documents that they uh, want you to submit using that format. So, for instance, if I go to this website, Taylors and Francis, um, you can see that here's this website, author services, templates and folders and stuff like this. Um, I just go to Word 2016, click on template. It's a zipped file. I already downloaded it, which is this one. You unzip it and this is the template. So one way of working it with it is you directly double click on the template. It's already set here. So you just start typing in it, right? Of course you have to change all this write up in it, but you can use the same formatting for your, for your, for your paper. However, there's an easier way to deal with it. Okay, so uh, in order to do that, we have to change the settings a little bit word. Right now here you see home insert, draw design, layout, stuff like this. You do not see anything called um, developer. Uh, it's easy to add that. All we have to do is go to file. We go all the way down to options. These are the options. So I, we have to come here to customize ribbon. 
after customize ribbon, I'll come here to developer and I have to click on developer. Just make sure that um, you check this checkbox and okay it. So as soon as you do it, you will see here, it shows developer, okay? So this is um, how you have to do it. Now, uh, in order for me to make sure that I'm using the template, once I click on developer, I'll see here document templates. I click on this one, go to attach, and I have to attach this template that I have saved on desktop. So Taylor and Francis attach, uh, right. I go to manuscript. Um, this is how the manuscript looks like. So let's say if I have to um, use something of, um, uh, use Tyler's and Francis template, I again have to go here, attach the template that was on the desktop. I go to desktop, attach this, okay it. <clears throat> All right, so now as soon as I do it, I'll see that near developer, I have another tab, which is add-ins, okay? So um, just select your title, this is your title. You select this and all the way click on article title, okay? Uh, I guess for this one, I've already done it, but okay, so let's just show you something. Okay, so just imagine this is how your article looks like. I go to add in, click on it. All right, and then let's say this abstract, I double click on abstract. This should be your heading number one. So I do this, I select all the abstract and then click on abstract. So it's going to format it as an abstract. These are my keywords. So again, I select this, click on keywords. Introduction should again be your heading number one. Uh, all right, so now this one is your paragraph number one, right? So since it's paragraph number one, I have to go here to paragraph, okay? And um, after this, each of these other ones are new paragraphs. So I'm going to select all of these and click on new paragraph. So I'll see that it's going to do all the formatting. Again, literature review is your heading number one. Within literature review, this is a subheading, which would be your heading number two. So I click on heading number two and you see that the formatting is automatically changing by itself. Again, this one is your new paragraph, uh, your paragraph. Uh, this is your table number one. So I select this and I click on table title. So it is going to keep it as it is. Uh, so this is another way how you can save your time on formatting. This would be your tip and trick number two. Um, moving on to trick number three. And that is how you can save time by not using your mouse and using your keyboard. So that's very, very simple. Uh, let's say if I have to select this paragraph, okay? So obviously one way is I click using the mouse, which I'm doing right now, which is going to take a long time, especially if you are selecting, you know, a lot of text. So for that reason, what you can do is you have to use some shortcuts on your desktop or on your keyboard, sorry. So what you have to do is basically, remember that every time you have these cursor keys on your keyboard, right? The four arrow keys, which is right, left, up, and down. You can obviously use them to move your cursor around, just like what I'm doing right now. These are the cursor keys on the keyboard. So what you need to do is if you click on shift and use the cursor keys, it's going to select the text, okay? Shift and the cursor key. So whichever way you want to do it, up, down, left, right, it's going to do it. But one thing what you can do is if you hold shift and control, which is CTRL, and then the cursor keys is going to select the entire words which is going to save time. Now, if you go right or left, it's going to do the words. If you go up and down, it's going to select the entire paragraphs. Um, then another thing that you can do is um, using your mouse clicks to select a word or a line or a paragraph. So if you click one time, obviously wherever, you are going to move your cursor to that place. Um, let's say I want to select this word. If you click double, like if you click twice, double click is going to select that word. 
if you click three times, it's going to select the entire paragraph. So that's again another way for you to make sure that you are doing it faster and efficiently and effectively. Moving on to tip number five, that's some of the shortcuts on your keyboard. So some of the shortcuts um, that we have, I'm going to put them right here. Um, that way you will know what to do. Okay, moving to new document. All right, so for this one, some of you might already know these things, but some of you may not. So if you do not know it, um, it's a good way to go ahead. Now, again, these are some of the things that are going to save you time, especially if you do not know these shortcuts. So let's say if you have a big document and if you want to change your text completely for the whole document, instead of holding and selecting everything, the best way to do it is control A. So you hold control and A together, that's going to select everything in the document. So right now, let's say um, I have this font as Calibri. I want to change, if let's say I want to change it to Arial, I go control A, go here and change it to Arial, which is going to change everything in the document. So that's one of your keyboard shortcuts. Uh, with control A, it selects everything in the document. Control C is copy. So let's say if I want to control, uh, if I want to copy this one, I select it, control C, and then I go somewhere and press control V to paste it. So control C is copy, control V is paste. If I want to cut it instead of copying it, that would be control X. Um, and again, control uh, A, V is your pasting. So control C, control X, and control V. Um, is so let me just write it here uh, this is copy this is paste and this is cut so this is how it is now um, these are some shortcuts now some other shortcuts are if you have to make uh, if you have to um, make your text bold, italic, or underlined, then again, you have to select the text. For bold, it's control B, which is either going to bold it or unbold it. For italic, it's control I. So again, control control I is italic. And control U is going to be underlined. Um, just this. So again, this is going to save you a lot of time um, using the shortcut instead of going and clicking using your mouse. So that's uh, another thing is page break. So let's say you want to do all these things and then um, it's very simple. So let's say I write all this and I th then from here, from this place, I want it to go to next page. So instead of uh, clicking the enter or hitting the enter button unlimited times, what I can do is very simply, I just click here because from here is where I want my text to go onto the next page. So I hold control plus enter. I do it and it goes to the next page. So, so these are some of the keyboard shortcuts. Now, if you want to know about more shortcuts, those are very simple. You just hover your mouse to any button on Microsoft Word and then you see that uh, it shows what this button is about. Like for example, this one is subscript and then it also shows you a shortcut, which is control plus is equal to. So if you do that, it's going to make it a subscript. We can just try it, control and is equal to. And here you go, it makes it into a small subscript. Um, we can even try this one. Here you go, it makes it a small subscript. So for anything, let's say you want to do a strike through, for, for things that, that there are shortcuts, they're going to show you. For things that there are no shortcuts, not going to show you. Let's say highlighter, there's no shortcut for you. Um, format painting, 
there is a shortcut and then we'll talk about this later on anyway so these are some of your keyboard shortcuts that you can use in order to improve your efficiency and effectiveness All right now so then obviously when you're working with microsoft word there, there are there are times when you have to undo some stuff and then there are also times where you have to redo something like for example if you have uh, clicked on undo quite a lot of times and then you have to re redo something it's pretty simple let's say um i just entered three four times and i want to you know take it back to wherever it was uh, in order to undo um, there's either a button here which is this one repeat or undo um, or there are shortcuts so shortcut for undoing is control z so every like i i just do control z it brings it back right up there but then i think oh no i i did wrong it was correct initially so in order to redo it i have to do control y so it goes back so again i'm going to write it here control plus z is equal to undo is undo basically and control plus y is redoing something so these are again two shortcuts that are going to undo or redo some of the stuff that you have done uh, moving to um, tip number seven okay so sometimes what happens is you're typing something um, and uh, you didn't realize you mistakenly click on caps lock let's say um, this is a tutorial for well i'm just writing i mistakenly hit the caps lock button and um, this is how it looks like and then you suddenly realize oh my god what have i done it's all in caps lock uh, most of the people i see is they have to delete everything and they have to restart is with blah 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 whatever it's very simple uh, you don't have to redo anything you don't have to delete it all you have to do is uh, just select the text that is in the wrong caps there's there are two ways of doing it obviously there's one way of doing it with mouse and you select this you go all the way here if you look here it says change case you change it to anything that you want uh, obviously you can do an uppercase and everything. This is one way. Another way of doing it is with your keyboard, which is a shortcut using keyboard. And I've been saying this since the start of the video. If you're using a keyboard shortcut, it saves you even more time compared to using the mouse. And in order to do this, the shortcut is Shift and F3. So when I do Shift and F3, it's going to toggle between three cases one is uppercase lowercase and then sentence case so again i have to put it here this is shift plus f3 uh, is going to toggle between different cases saving you a lot of time especially if you have typed a lot in a wrong case uh, moving to uh, tip number eight okay so sometimes what happens is you are writing um, something here here is a list of various points and then i have to put a point so i have to go and select a bullet point to write it again using a mouse uh, to save time you know uh, creating a bullet list is extremely simple all you have to do is put a static and click on spacebar so again write a static and a space bar and then you automatically have your bullet list again this is something that is going to save you time in the long run so that is your tip number eight tip number nine is your paragraph alignment so going back to that manuscript that i had so right now if you look at this paragraph this one is justified on left or it's aligned on left so you see that on left it's in the straight line on the right side it's not pretty straight so how do you deal with this one how do you align it towards left right or center obviously you do it here right so either you do it here again it's about the mouse clicking 
the keyboard shift for this one is pretty simple. You hold your control button and then you do it left, which is going to bring it on left. You hold control and R, which is going to bring it to the right. You do it control E, which is going to bring it in the center. So control L is for left, control R is for right, control E is for the middle or the center. Now, if you click it twice, it's going to bring it back to its original one. So the, again, this is a shortcut using your keyboard to improve the effectiveness of your word usage. Um, moving on to uh, tip number 10, that's about paragraph spacing. So again, uh, paragraph spacing is pretty complicated. One is either you go here and change the spacing of the paragraph, um, or if you want to go, you have to really open another dialog box to do it. Uh, to save you time, what you can do is, uh, if you control, hold control and one, like holding control, press one on your keyboard, it's going to make it single space. Control two is going to make it double space. Control five, is going to make it 1.5 space. Now this is usually the spacing that most of the people use, either single space, 1.5 or double space. So control one is going to make it single space, control five is going to make it 1.5 spacing, and control two is going to make it double space. So that's um, your tip number 10. Uh, going to tip number 11. Now sometimes what happens, especially people who are used to British English coming to American can, uh, American uh, English, or if you are submitting an uh, article to uh, a British journal while you are from American origin, there's a lot of mistakes in, uh, in the paper, especially when it comes to the words like behavior or favor or stuff like this, where there's one you or there's no you. So in order to do that, there's a smart function in Word and that's called replace. Uh, for instance, older versions people used to have two spaces after every uh, full stop let's say there's a full stop right now I have one space that's a lot of times you will see there are two spaces uh, like this so let's say if you are submitting to a journal where you have written your paper like this but that journal is asking you to add two spaces after each full stop how do you do that it's very simple. Um, again, do not do control A and select everything because you may not want to do it in your references. You Let's say I'm just selecting this paragraph. I go to replace, but first I need to do is find. So I put a full stop and a space. So what the word is going to do is it's going to find all the places where I have a full stop and a space after that. And I have to replace it with a full stop, one space and two spaces. And then, what I do is, uh, also for you to really see how it works, um, I am going to also highlight all the changes just so that you know how it, it's working right now. So I click on replace all. All right, yes, okay, perfect. So here, now if you look, all these highlighted places, uh, you see one and two. Um, every single full stop that you see in the document is going to be two spaces. Now, obviously, uh, this is a software, so you still have to go and look for some stuff. Like for example, here I have Patrick at all. I don't need to have two spaces here because it's not a full stop, it's just referencing. And that's why it's important to use this highlight function so that you see where the changes are made and if there's changes that are not uh, the right changes, you can redo those things or undo those things. So moving to um, point number 12. Now, we all know how do you copy and paste things and I I've talked about it, right? So you do control C, which is for your copy and then control V is for your paste. Now, how about this? Um, I want to copy and paste a few things. Let's say I want to copy this and I want to copy this at the same time and then paste them somewhere else. How do I do that? So obviously 
one way is I copy it here. Let me just put a distinction so that you can understand. Okay, so let's say I copy this here. I paste it here and then I copy this here and I paste it here. Imagine I want to copy five things and paste them in the same, in another place. How do I do that? I mean, well, we have to copy each of them separately and paste them, which is going to give uh, at least 10 commands because five commands are for copying and five commands are for pasting. So how about I tell you that there's an easier way to deal with that. And in Microsoft Word, we have a, um, a function called spike, uh, copying and Skype, uh, spike pasting. How do we do that? It's like this. So what I do is I go and select this and instead of control and uh, C, which is control C is for copy, I, what I do is I do control and F3. Now, you may think where did it go? Okay, so what happened is it cut it. So every time you do control and F3 is gonna move away. So you have to do control Z after that. So it comes back, but it's already copied somewhere. Okay, and then I go and again, control F3. Okay, and now just see, instead of control V to paste, what I have to do is control shift and F3. And then you see that it comes. So that's that. Uh, moving on to point number 13. So sometimes you have to in, insert a, a hyperlink or delete and hyperlink. So for deleting, it's different. I'm going to go into that. For inserting, let's say I want to insert a hyperlink here. So one way is I select this, I go right click and link insert link. So there are at least four or five different clicks that you have to go through with the mouse in order to do this. An easier way is to find a shortcut with your, uh, with your keyboard. And how do we do that? So you select this and the shortcut for the hyperlink is control K. So I press control K and I directly go here to put, you know, www.google.com, let's say. Um, so, it links me to Google. Um, now, you know, so that, that's an easier way to include a hyperlink in your document, control K. Um, I'm going to put it here, control plus K. This is the shortcut for adding the hyperlink. How do you remove the hyperlink? So you go here and to remove is control shift F9, control shift control plus shift plus F9. So you click, hit all these three buttons and your hyperlink will be gone. Obviously, uh, if you have only one hyperlink, an easier way is to right click on this one and remove hyperlink. But let's just show you something, okay? it's. Uh, Let's say you go to Wikipedia, you pick up something from a web page or something where there are, let's say, a lot of hyperlinks. So just bear with me. Just imagine this, you are doing this and there are a lot of hyperlinks here. Um, so instead of going to each one of them and removing hyperlink, all you have to do is select all the text, Control Shift F9 again, all your hyperlinks are gone. So that's another trick, how to remove your hyperlinks. Um, okay, going to point number 14. Now, this is very important for people who are actually um, researchers or who have to input equations or Excel tables or some diagrams or figures into the Word document. Now, obviously Word has been uh, improved a lot. So if you go to insert tab, you see that you can include icons or stuff like this, charts, screenshots, and different type of things. But there are still things that are difficult to input, especially let's say if you're working on a research paper where you have a, a huge model and that model is very difficult to place in the in the microsoft word so basically normally what we do is we go to the shapes um, we add a lot of the shapes like this 
and then you know again and again we do let's say another shape and then we connect them like this whatever i mean this is the idea right so you create this whole model uh, and it's extremely difficult to format this model or to change the format in the microsoft word so one easier way to do it is in microsoft uh, in uh, PowerPoint. In PowerPoint, we do a lot of models and it's those models are extremely easy to make in PowerPoint. So for, for instance, I'm going to show you some um, stuff here. So for instance, if I have to create a model which is like a little complicated, um, for instance, something like this. So when you look at something like this, if you have to create this in Microsoft Word, it's extremely difficult to do it. Um, it's much, much easier to um, do this thing in my PowerPoint to design this, okay? So let's say if I have to put this one into Word, what I have to do is I go to insert, and when I come to insert, here is one thing called object, okay? So I go to object, and here you will see that um, you have a lot of different options. So you can do a Word document, a presentation, Excel file, and you can even put a flash, a, a Adobe Acrobat document and stuff like this. But let's say I want to do a Microsoft slide, okay? So here is a slide that I am going to, that's exactly what it is. So want even a much easier way of doing it so what we can do is i go here now look this is completely editable so you create a, <clears throat> a diagram in powerpoint you get this one it's completely editable so you can change whatever you want and um, after that you come to this slide control a which is going to control all these different elements in your powerpoint control c which is going to copy all these elements in your PowerPoint. You come to Microsoft Word, and here to paste it, obviously you can do Control V, but if you do Control V, you're going to lose all the formatting because of the compatibility. So instead of doing that, I would suggest you to do is go to this paste, there's a small arrow under it. You click on that, go to Paste Special. In Paste Special, here you click on picture enhanced meta file so you do that and here you go so now what happened is this is not editable so what you did is you selected things from microsoft powerpoint you prop them here as an image so this is an image now this is very very important if you're submitting papers to journals and if you have a model like this which is pretty complicated what you can do in this type of models, what happens normally is that one of your one element of your figure is in one place, other is in another place. So the best option is doing it like this. Your figure remains in one place and it looks much more professional. Uh, so that is your tip number, uh, I don't know, maybe 12, 13, 14, 14, I guess. Yeah, okay. All right, so <laughs> that's that. Now, <clears throat> what happens is, let's say, um, tip number 15, we go to um, look into some stuff related to formatting. Copy something from Wikipedia, copy it, or somewhere else, wherever. I paste it here. So once I paste it, now you see that the formatting is not exactly like what you would want it to be. Or let's go to this manuscript, okay? So just imagine I paste something here. If you look at the formatting of your original text and this one, these are very different, okay? So the first thing is obviously, I first thing obviously I will have to remove the hyperlinks and to remove the hyperlinks, I told you earlier, it's control shift F9. So control shift F9, all the hyperlinks are gone. Uh, but now I want the formatting to be like this. But in order to do that, I need to first strip this text of its older formatting okay so what i do is i select this one and here is one button called clear formatting so i click on this and you see that your formatting is gone now remember this document 
I had it as the template for tailors and fences. So if you see, once you strip it off formatting, it's formatting become like the other text. But if the same thing happened here, let's say, okay, I control shift F9 in, in a new document. So what would happen is if I strip it, you see the formatting here is different because here I have a complete different template for this document, okay? So this template, if you remember, we went to developer, we went to document template, and this was the Taylor's and Francis template. That's why once you strip this new text off its original format, it goes to the default, for, default format of Taylor's and Francis. But here, it's a new document. So this is the default. If I go to developer, document template, you see here, this is not Taylor's and Francis. So that's why the default formatting is different. Now let's say if I want to format it um, according to this file, okay? So what I do is I select something. Okay, let's say I, I want to use this format. I select this and I go to this thing, it's called Format Painter. So I click on this. Okay, so again, going back, Okay, let, let me do it side by side so it's easier for you to, okay. So if you look at this document here, um, if I want to use this formatting for this paper. So what I do is I go here, I click anywhere and then go to this format paint. Click on this and then bring the paint and select this text here. And then you see the formatting is exactly like what we have here. So that's uh, clearing the format and then copying the format. This is what you have to do in order to save time instead of really doing all the formatting. Um, just see, for instance, this is the heading. So I click here, I paint the format. And here I go and I want to make this history look exactly like that introduction. So now again, remember caps lock is not a formatting issue. So for cap lock, the introduction is in cap lock. This one you select shift and F3, like I said earlier, so it's going to make it into cap lock. So th this is your clearing and copying formatting. Now, another thing that we want to do is uh, let's say if some of you are working on your thesis or dissertations, we take a long, long time to create table of contents. Okay, so in Microsoft Word, there's an easy way of doing table of contents, uh, but that one is um, uh, going to make, uh, I mean, for that, you have to understand how headings work. Okay, so you need to know the levels of headings. So let's say if I have to create a table of content for this one, I select this abstract, okay, and then I go here and I will select here heading one. You need to find somewhere heading one, right? This is heading five, heading three, heading two. Okay, so this is your heading number one. So I select heading one and then I go to introduction. Introduction is again your heading number one. So I select heading number one I go to literature review. Remember this literature review is still heading number one because this is the first level of headings. Okay, now this one is under literature review. So we'll call it heading number two. So I select heading number two. So um, we come down all the way I'm not going to do all of them, but just to give you an idea. So all your, okay, let's say this personal innovativeness, I put it as heading number two, because these are all different levels of headings. And then let's go to methodology. This is again your heading number one, measures, Let's say it's your heading number two. 
So I, I mean, you just go through all of it and then let's say I want to go to here, right before the title, I want to put my table of content, right? So once you do all these headings, I need to go to this referencing right here. And here is table number one. Um, I mean, these are different tables. So let's say I select this table number one. So you see, now here is your abstract introduction literature. If you remember, these are the headings that I have picked up, right? So you do all these heading levels and then you come and click on automatic table of content. And this is how it's gonna work out. Now, for instance, this abstract right now is on page number one, right here. So let's say something happens. Um, you take it to, now if you look abstract goes to page number two, right? So in order for you to change this, you just click on this, click on update table, okay? So sometimes you just change the page numbers, but sometimes you also change the headings, okay? So let's say here, I just do the page numbers, you see abstract goes to page number two, okay? But imagine that instead of abstract, I want to make it as, a summary, but just, you know, later on. So right now, if I go to update table and I click, you see that it will just, it will come to update entire table is going to change it into summary, page number two. So this is another way of um, uh, dealing with it. Now some journals or say, if you're working on a thesis or stuff, they're also going to ask you to, um, uh, do a table of figures or table of um, uh, a list of figures or a list, list of table. So for that one, it's also very easy. Uh, in Microsoft Word, you can definitely do this. So let's say this is table number one. Uh, what I need to do is uh, I need to come here in this same place, which is references, okay? And I need to click, click on insert caption. So this one, since this is a table, I have to change it into a table. Table number one, this was the title of table number one. Um, okay, normally for tables, it's above selected item. So here is my title of the table. Um, then I go to, let's say table two. This is my table number two. So I go to, insert caption, table number two, and then okay. I go to table number three. So insert caption, table three. Okay, and then let's say, let's, let's go to find the uh, Figure number one. So this was my figure number one. Again, when I go to insert caption, I instead of table, I select figure now. So it automatically does the figuring. Okay, so I think we are good here. Um, going back to home, let's say I want to add the list of tables or list of figures. So list of tables, if you want to do list of figures, okay. Um, again, caption level is figure from template, I do okay. And this is my figure number one, which is page number 15. Now, let's say I want to put the list of tables. So what I need to do is I need to change this to tables and okay. And here I go with three tables. Okay, so this, um, another thing that sometimes people do, especially uh, if you're working on a paper and if you have to add something on each page or each different places, what you need to do is you need to create um, auto text, okay, auto text. So what you need to do is, how, how do you do that? You go to home, okay, and here is a search bar. So you go to search bar 
and you write quick parts. Okay, if you look here, explore quick parts, auto text. Okay, so you go to auto text and all right, now going to researchers, okay? So there are a couple of different things that Microsoft Word came up with. It's the latest edition of Microsoft. And these are very, very interesting features, very cool features. So one of them is called Smart Lookup. One of them is called Windows Research. So this is very cool if you are doing initial research on certain things. Okay, so for instance, I go here and let's say I look at smartphone diet apps and I want to know more about this smartphone diet apps, uh, what it is or how I can work with it or stuff like this. So what I do is I go to like this smartphone diet app, right click on it. And here is smart lookup. So I click on smart lookup and let's just see what, what it comes up with. Okay. So what it come up with is a few different things from internet, okay? So you look here, you have smartphone, web search, 10 best Android light apps and stuff like this. Um, if you want to read this further, you need to double click this and it's going to take you to this website. So you can start reading about it from the internet, which is pretty cool. I think it's very handy instead of you copying, pasting different things. It's, it's really, really cool. Um, and obviously we can go to more and stuff. Now let's say you're a smart lookup. Okay. It's, um, it's, it's a cool, cool little feature that can help you uh, with just reading some stuff, especially if you are doing some initial research and things like this. Now, another thing that you can work on is Windows Researcher. With Researcher, what you need to do is you need to go to this in, References tab and here you will see Researcher. You click on Researcher and uh, here. So just put something here. Let's say I'm going to write smartphone diet apps and click on search. Okay, so um, just give it a moment. And here you get some apps which are on Microsoft Store. Um, here you get some internet features, okay, and some websites, some journals, like journal articles, which are really, really cool. I mean, um, you don't have to go to Google Scholar, blah, blah, blah. Oh, now, again, I'm not saying that it's all inclusive. It's going to give you everything perfectly, but at least for an initial research, it's going to give you some cool ideas. So going back to something, let's say um, you open this article. Here is the abstract and stuff. Now, of course, you can go to the browser and read this paper in detail. Um, just imagine that you think that this article is really cool and uh, you want to cite it, okay? So, and let's say I want to cite it here. So what I will do is, I will click on plus. And as soon as I click on plus, where will go? Yeah. So as soon as I click on plus, you will see that this citation right here, it comes up here. Plus, it also goes to your it also goes to the end of your document as a citation. Okay. Now by default, the citation is APA style, but if you want to change it to, let's say something else like IEEE is going to change it. Okay. So you, all you have to do is just change it from here. So again, I think it's, um, it's, it may not be like a complete solution, but I really think that it's going to give you really, really cool stuff. If you are really starting into something very, interesting okay and and you, you you can keep doing it like you can come back here um okay so let's say i'm i'm going to put utaut2 um just the theory that i'm using uh, let's give it a moment we go to journal articles and here we have a lot of stuff Okay, so 
uh, any of these things. Let's say I'm, I'm just going to do this one. Um, you click on plus. Okay, so again, right here, you get this one. And if you go all the way down, now you have the same thing, this elderly and internet banking. So you get it in your references as well as you get it as a reference right up as a citation. So again, I think it's a very, very cool idea. Now, the last thing that I'm going to show you is very, in, I mean, it's, it's a basic thing, but sometimes what happens is you want to do something, but you don't know how to do it. So again, Windows come up with a very cool feature and that's the smart, uh, you, you actually have to tell window uh, word, what do you want to do? So let's say, Here's a search thing, okay? Um, you need to find something. Let's uh, let's just think like I want to create a table, okay? So you can basically talk to Windows, uh, Microsoft Word, and you because you use this table, you get these things. For instance, you get the help, okay? Insert a table, is blah blah blah. So you can do this. Uh, add table, choose page size, blah. I mean, if you want to select something else, um, how to change case, okay? Change the capitalization. So again, you can sometimes, what happens is you, it's difficult for you to explain, but you can just type it even in a normal conversational language. You can just type it here and then you can get something out of um, uh, the help options or even it's going to suggest you some stuff here. So these are some of the tips and tricks that I think uh, are lesser known for to a lot of people. But most of all, I think that if you follow these uh, suggestions or these shortcuts or uh, these tips and tricks, they are going to make you into a much more productive writer, researcher. Uh, you're going to save a lot of time and you are going to make sure that your work is effectively and efficiently done. So um, this is the end of the video, but please tell me um, in the comments about what are the, some of the stuff that you use out of the things that I've just talked about, or if there are any other features that you think I have missed, I would highly recommend you putting them down in the comment section below watching this video. So thank you again for uh, 